Hello from COP27. This is the annual session where governments come together in order to push further international law in support of action to address climate change. So at this session we're dealing with four huge issues alongside a lot of other issues of more operational nature. So we deal with mitigation and enhancing ambition for mitigation. Mitigation means the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions from all our economic sectors, from all countries. We're also dealing with adaptation, which means responding to the impacts of climate change that have not uh, been reduced due to mitigation strategies like floods, droughts, sea level rise, etc., with implications on food security, on health, on all aspects of our daily life. The third element that we're discussing here is something called loss and damage, which is what can the international community do out of a sense of responsibility to help countries address their losses and damages after a disaster or another climate-related impact has taken place in, for, in the form of rehabilitation or reconstruction, etc. The fourth element is that of means, of means of implementation, especially finance. So we have finance, technology and capacity building as the mainstays, the three pillars of the means of implementation. Now all of this operates in a context where we are woefully short of the required ambition. So on mitigation alone, the science has told us that our pledges for 2030 have to show a reduction in emissions of 43% compared to 2010. The pledges we have today point to plus 11%. So there's a paradigm shift needed. There's a realignment needed. Regulators, and also audit institutions are instrumental to catalyze that alignment at national level and maybe even coordinated at international level because we need all our policies, whether economic, political or otherwise, to be supportive of a long-term transition towards a sustainable future. We have to move away from short-termism and look at intergenerational equity and how can we audit our policies to test for that intergenerational equity? How do we audit our policies to test for whether an action to support sustainability in our own countries does not result in a negative externality in another country, a neighboring country, say in a shared river basin? So here's where I think audit institutions can take the lead in providing the necessary signals at national level and beyond national level. Signals for that realignment that needs to take place. A leadership role, rather than a backward looking assessment of what has been done, but an incentive for governments, for businesses, for other institutions to do better in terms of transitioning us into that new world of permanent sustainability. And remember, the science has given us 10 years, 10 years in which to transform our economies to that sustainable future that we are looking for. And so everyone must join forces and certainly I appreciate the efforts of Intosai in getting into this context and, and, and deliberating and engaging with us on this and I think the role of Supreme Audit Institutions is paramount in pushing that envelope that we're talking about. Thank you very much.